Candace Hicks, and I live in Nacogdoches, Texas, where I teach design at Stephen F. Austin State University. Teaching affects me deeply because I come into contact with a lot of other people's ideas working with students every day. I studied printmaking and painting in art school, but my artistic output today is multimedia. I enjoy experimenting with ideas more than with techniques. The decision to use a particular medium completely transforms a concept. Books and literature will probably always be ideas that I return to because I still have so much to discover there. I used to think of myself primarily as a book artist. I've certainly been making books for a long time. I've made over 140 volumes of the series Common Threads, a hand embroidered series about reading. I've been working on this series for almost 20 years. It's held my interest for that long. Reading books, especially fiction, is as necessary as sleeping, exercise, or food or water. Some artists make work because they feel compelled, but that's how I feel about stories. So I read a lot and I notice that sometimes a word, phrase, or a character name appears in two or more books in a row. I find unexpected phrases like black currant lozenge or antique dental instrument in two unrelated books read in succession. Good writers of fiction know that a chance encounter or coincidence convinces the reader of the believability of a plot. We basically only tell stories of serendipity and we suspend our disbelief when we know the coincidences have been orchestrated by the author of fiction. In the books I'm reading, another intertextual story emerges, fueled by my own random selections. No one else is reading the same books as me in the same order, so in a way, my reading is my life's work. The hand-stitched notebooks that I make recording the coincidences I uncover are a byproduct of that process. I learned the basics of sewing as a kid, but I taught myself embroidery for the sake of a pun. I wanted a medium for creating an artist book about coincidence, and I settled on embroidering cloth pages and calling it common threads. At the same time, fabric suited the tactile quality that I was looking for. The text, cover, and illustrations are all stitched in embroidery floss on, on fabric. Each volume is unique. Lastly, I like the fabric books are associated with young children and early child development. The textual content of my books doesn't always touch on motherhood or feminism. However, the choice of materials evokes a sense of domesticity. I was interested in making books before I realized it was an art form. Books allow for a direct communication with the reader. You can literally put it in someone else's hands. Unlike painting or sculpture, they are experienced intimately and privately. Making books allows me to reach readers or viewers wholly one-to-one. -one. Most of my work is text-based. Even my interactive installations include copious text and or accompanying books. During COVID-19 isolation, I started finding it harder to write or even read. Playing around with a way to make a drawing of a sheet of blank paper I discovered that I could stretch the embroidered canvas like a painting over a shaped panel. Suddenly, so many variations occurred to me. I've made hundreds of these notes for string theory drawings. They share the trompe l'oeil effect of the notebooks in that viewers sometimes do a double take, at first not placing the texture as stitching. Previously, I made a series of large-scale artist books called String Theory, Understanding Coincidence in the Multiverse. And I like to think of the notes for string theory as precursors. Even though they came after string theory chronologically, these distinctions don't really matter in the multiverse, and it avoids m affords me another cherished punny title. The many permutations warp the space of the picture plane in all the ways I can imagine. Seeing the distorted pages, viewers have the experience of seeing something quotidian in an unfamiliar way. Salina Art Center permitted me to build an artwork that I hadn't had the chance to make in the past. By enabling me to build a false wall in the gallery, I could embed dioramas within, allowing me to multiply the space of the exhibition. The views beyond the wall are accessed visually via peepholes. I then camouflaged the peepholes within a mural of over 5,000 circular mirrors that collectively reveal an image of a cloud formation. Visitors cannot see the work without seeing themselves reflected, 
and many might feel compelled to document the experience with a selfie. While it's not unusual for an artwork to inspire audience interaction, I hope that the engagement will not end with a quick post or pic. Careful observers will notice that certain elements are repeated throughout the exhibition, connecting ideas into a loose narrative. I'm interested in conspiratorial thinking and the ways that we form meaning from pattern and repetition. Coincidences and serendipity can easily convince us that we are witnessing a larger truth, but often our cognitive bias can lead us to wrong conclusions.